Hey folks, in this series of episodes, I'm looking at a variety of approaches to visualizing global climate change. Recently, I found this figure over on Wikipedia, uh, created by Ed Hawkins. If you've been watching my recent videos, you know, I seem to have a love for Ed Hawkins' uh, data visualizations. I think they're really cool, um, and they're not made in R. And so that gives us some extra challenges to figure out how to implement these types of visualizations in R. Even if you don't care about climate change, which who are you? <laughs> um, then, then I think it's really valuable to try to imitate the work of others using the tooling that you have. And it helps us to learn that tool all the better. Um, as simple um, or complicated as this figure might look, there's a lot of it in here that you might look at and say, hmm, how would I do that in R? Well, I'm going to show you how to do this in R today. So let's head over to R Studio and get going. As always, I have a R script started here with Library Tidyverse to get us going. If you want to get the code and the project as it currently stands with the data and everything, uh, head down below in the description. There's a link to a blog post to get you uh, all set up and ready to roll. I'm going to fire off Library Tidyverse, and then we'll do read CSV. Uh, my data is in the data directory. And it's this horribly named file, GLBTS plus DSS, whatever. <laughs> Who knows? Um, the first line is a header. It doesn't have heading names. That's in the second line. So we'll do skip uh, equals one. And then my NA values, uh, as we've seen in previous episodes, are three stars. And so now we can see that, yeah, sure enough, we get the year and the different months. Uh, down below, we also see we've got December. Uh, we've got January through December, which we've been using. December through November, and then the four different seasons. What I am interested in for this episode are the different months. Because if you recall that plot I showed you, on the x-axis are the different months, and then each line represents a different year, and the y-axis then are these uh, changes in temperature. The data that I have is normalized between the years 1951 and 1980. Ed Hawkins's is um, a couple decades later, but we'll get the same effect. Uh, it's the same globe, right? Um, so what I want to do is extract out the 12 months. And something that's kind of cool about R is that it comes preloaded with certain vectors. So if I do month.abb, I get the 12 months. <laughs> and fortunately for me, these are the same uh, formatted month names that we have in our column headings, right? So what I could do is I could do select, and I can then do month.abb. This then gives me... 12 columns of months. But of course, I also want the year, right? And so that first column year, um, I can do year equals capital Y year. And now I've got my 12 months as well as my year. Wonderful. We now need to tidy this so that, again, we can have all the months in one column, all the years in one column, and all the temperatures in one column. To do that, we'll use our old friend pivot longer. And we'll do everything but year. And then the names uh, will send to uh, month. And then the values will go to, uh, and there I will say t underscore diff. And sure enough, now we have that three column data frame. I'll go ahead and call this data frame t diff uh, so that we can save it and work with it in ggplot. So now we can go ahead and make that initial version of the plot by taking t diff and piping this to ggplot. Uh, in our aesthetics, again, across the x axis, I want to put uh, the month on the y, I'm going to put t diff, and then I'm going to group by year. So group equals year, and I'll also do color equals year. And then we will do geom underscore line, and there we go. We have our initial version of our plot. Again, each line represents a different year, and we have our months across the x-axis. Clearly, we have a lot of work to do. Uh, the first thing that stands out to me is I'm getting this warning message about removing seven rows containing missing data um, from GeoMath. It's a warning, so it doesn't really matter. But I think if I take tdiff and I look at the end of it, um, I think I'm going to see a bunch of NA values. Yep. And there I have six NA values. And I'm sure um, if I looked back, uh, yeah, so like these are months that don't exist yet, right? Um, I'm recording this towards the end of May. So I'm pretty sure that 2022 May and uh, June are missing, right? Um, so I could double check that by doing tail n equals 10. And sure enough, oh, April, May, uh, and so forth um, are all missing. And so, uh, yeah, and so those are the values that it's complaining about not being able to plot in geom line. So what I can do 
is I can come in here and I can then do drop underscore NA. My warning message goes away and we're in good shape. The next thing that I'm worried about are my months. They're in alphabetical order rather than numerical order. So what I can do here in this pipeline is I can pipe this into a mutate uh, on month and I'm gonna define month to be a factor uh, and we'll do month and then my levels will be uh, the same vector month.abb because that had those in the correct order. And so now, um, if I go ahead and plot that, now I see that I've got the months in order from January all the way across to December, and we're in good shape. One thing that sticks out to me about the original version though, is that you can see the preceding year, so like December of the preceding year, um, is kind of represented at the left side of the plot, and January of the next year is represented on the right side of the plot, right? So my lines, extend back from January and forward after December. So how would I go about engineering that in there? So the way I'm going to engineer this is to create three separate data frames. I'll create a data frame of the last December and the next January, as well as the tdiff data frame that I already have. So I can go ahead and take tdiff, and I will then do a filter for month equals equals DEC. And this will give me all of the December data, right? And now what I could do would be a mutate on year. Um, and so this is going to be the year minus one, right? Uh, so year minus one. And then month, I'm going to call this last underscore DEC. And so now you can see I've created a new data frame for the last December. And I can do the same type of thing, but for January. So I could do a tdiff, pipe that to filter, month equals equals uh, Jan and pipe that to a mutate with year equaling year plus one because it's the next January. Um, and then I will also do month equals next Jan, right? And so now I've got the next year's January, right? Um, very good. And what I can do is I can call this last DEC, right? And I will then call this next Jan. And I'm also going to borrow this line where I mutated month to make it a factor, because I'm gonna do that once I've concatenated all three of these data frames together. So I'll, I'll store that down here. And I will go ahead and make sure I've got these three data frames loaded. Now I can do bind rows with um, last DEC, tdiff, and next jan. This then gives me the combined data frame. I can double check that things look right if I do count on month, right? And so now I see I've got last December, next Jan in here. Um, the numbers vary a little bit, again, because we had those months that were missing from 2022. That's great. Now I'm gonna bring back in my mutate to make the factors. Um, but now I also have that last December and the next January. So what I'll add to this um, will be the, um, I think I called it last underscore DEC, month abbreviation, and then next underscore Jan. And I'll add a parentheses here, and I will go ahead and feed this into my ggplot. We now have last December in that first spot on the x-axis and next Jan in the last spot on the x-axis. Again, looking back at, again, the original version of the figure um, basically drew the x-axis so that it cut off the last Decem and the next Jan, but we could see the lines going to those points. So what I want to do is change the scale on my x-axis. I can think of it as going from, say, like um, 1 to 14. I basically made two months. And so then I would want to set my limits on my x-axis to go from like um, 1 and a half to 13 and a half, right? So to basically lop off that, that first and last month. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and create another variable here that I'll call month underscore number. Um, and that's going to be as.numeric on month. So a factor is a vector of characters, and it then preserves the order. And that order is what you get back when you put a factor as the argument to as.numeric. So again, if I look at these two lines, I then see that I've got a month number corresponding to last December. So I don't have to think about, you know, what am I indexing on? So I would rather have January be 1 <laughs> and December be 12, last December be zero, and next January be 13. To do that, I can go ahead and subtract one from these values. And so now I see last December is zero. Good. 
Um, and so I can now feed this into ggplot. Um, on the x-axis, I'm going to put month number. And so again, I can see I have my month number starting at 0, which again is last December, going up to 14. So let's go ahead and throw on a scale x continuous on this. And my breaks, I'll do 1 to 12, again, the 12 months. My labels, I will then do month.abb, again, that vector of months. And I will also then go ahead and add on a chord Cartesian. And I'll do x lim uh, from 1, uh, 1 to 12. And there we go. We now have our January over to December. And we've got that effect of the lines going backwards. Um, I think we basically have an extra half a month um, on either end. And I think that looks pretty good. I'm happy with, with how things are coming along. The next thing I want to take on uh, is the coloring. And so the coloring that I think they're using is a, from the Veritas package. I'm sh they may have made this in Python, and a Veritas package is, is fairly common. It's a package that works well for um, dealing with red-green colorblind deficiency, and um, also for like a gradient. And so R has a special gradient function. So we could do scale uh, color uh, Veritas, and I'm going to use the C because that provides um, the continuous uh, scale. Throw that in there. And so now we can see that we've got that kind of dark purple for down by 1880 and the yellower color for more recent. And so, yeah, it looks like they did use the scale color Veritas. Again, if you didn't want to use the scale color Veritas, um, you could, of course, go ahead and use like scale color gradient uh, to get the same kind of effect and pick your upper and lower bound um, on those, those colors for the different years. Good. Um, now what I want to do is let's go ahead and start changing the theming to get the back to be a dark gray and the plot window itself to be black. And I'll do a theme and we'll do plot.background. So we'll use element rect fill equals black. And then we'll do panel.background element rect fill equals. I'm going to throw in a hexadecimal. Um, let's do um, CC, CC, CC. So I've flipped the backgrounds. Um, the black should be the, uh, I believe, the panel, and the, the panel should be the plot. So let me go ahead and fix that real quick. Um, get those confused. So plot and panel. And then also this uh, CC, CC is a very a lighter gray. So let's go ahead and do th uh, a set of threes. So now we have the panel itself has the black background, which is good. Um, let's see if we can maybe lighten up uh, the, the, the plot background itself, and I'll go up to fours. That looks pretty decent. The next thing I want to do is get rid of those white grid lines. And so to do that, we'll do panel.grid equals element blank. That then, of course, gets rid of the background. The next thing that I want to do is go ahead and add my horizontal line. So I'll come back up here, and before running geome line, I'll do geom h line, and then the argument I want to use is y intercept equals zero, so it'll cross at the zero line. And my color I will set to white and add that in. Very good, we can see that white line behind everything now. I'm noticing that I'm losing uh, my axis labels. So let's go ahead back into theme and add those to be white. And so I will then do axis.text uh, and I'll do element text uh, color equals white. So that white now appears to be more clear. And um, I'm noticing that on the y-axis, I have values every uh, half a degree, whereas in the original, it was every two degrees. So maybe what I'll do is I'll come back up to uh, my scales and do scale y continuous. And I will then do breaks uh, equals, and I'll do a seek from, uh, let's do from minus two to two by 0 0.2. Um, it won't use all those, of course, but um, that'll give us pretty good range of values. So now we have every two tenths of a degree, we have a value there. Um, the tick marks, of course, are getting, um, they're black, and so it's hard to see with that dark gray background. So we can go ahead and here then and do axis.ticks, and I'll do element uh, col uh, line, and then the color uh, is white. And so now those, those ticks are white, um, but they're pointing outwards rather than inwards. And so I can change that by doing axis.ticks, uh, dot length, um, and I can then say unit, and I'll do minus five uh, PT. And so the minus five obviously is gonna be in the opposite direction. Um, and so it should be about five 
points into the plot. And so now we see our tick marks moving in. Of course, the original did have a white border all the way around the figure. So let's go ahead and add that. So I could change the axis using axis.line, but I think what I'll do instead is come back up to um, my panel background where I have the fill being black. I could do color uh, equals white to get a white border. And so now I see I've got a thin line all the way around. I can make a little bit thicker by doing size equals one. So that gives me a bit of a more bold uh, white border around my plotting window which is good. One other thing I'm noticing is the original, of course, had tick marks on all four sides. So um, that's something that we don't often see with ggplot generated figures. We generally only see the tick marks on the bottom X and the left Y. So to do that uh, is actually relatively straightforward. Up here on scale X continuous, we can do sec dot axis, and then we can say dupe underscore axis as a function. And we can add the same thing uh, to our scale y continuous. This then gives us the same y axis on both sides and the same x axis on both sides. So I can turn off those extra labels um, by doing name equals null and then labels equals null um, as arguments to dupe axis uh, for both of these. And so now I see that I no longer have that extra labels. And we've got our inward pointing tick marks all the way around. Let's go ahead and fix up our um, axis labels or axis titles. So we see that on the original, the X axis didn't have a title. The months are pretty obvious. And the Y axis is temperature change since pre-industrial times degrees Celsius. So to do that, we can come up here and I'll go ahead and do labs uh, X equals null and Y equals temperature change since pre industrial times, and then we'll use square brace and then C, and they use a degree sign. So that is U00B0. Uh, that's the hexadecimal code for a degree sign. And so let's go ahead and add that in. And so, yeah, we now see that we've got that title there. We got the, the Unicode correct, but that does need to be white. So we'll again do axis.title element uh, text color equals white and then for the title uh, we'll go ahead and do uh, title global temperature change since um, and I'll go ahead and put in 1880 uh, you can look back at the previous videos to see how you could programmatically generate that but I'd rather spend more time getting the styling right on our figure than worrying about using glue and all that and so we now need to do plot dot title uh, element text color equals white very good now I'm noticing that you know the size of fonts and size of titles um, is a little bit off I'm, I'm also going to be wanting to change the size of my legend because that changes as the size of the figure changes I'm going to go ahead and save it to the size the dimensions uh, and the format that I want it to be in the final version so I'll do gg save and I'll put this into figures and I'll do temperature lines.png my width I'll do 8 my height equals 4.5 so my version has a slightly different um, aspect ratio than the original I picked mine because it's the aspect ratio of a thumbnail for YouTube um, but I would still like to make the fonts on my axis labels and my titles a bit bigger I'm also noticing that the title um, should be by month um, and should be a little bit larger and should be centered. And then we'll go ahead and tackle that legend. So again, we'll go down to um, axis title and let's try size equals 10 and axis uh, text. Let's go ahead and make that uh, size equals nine. So that didn't seem to do anything. Let's go ahead and try this at 14 and 13. So I think that looks a lot better. Um, the title is a little bit too long. Maybe I'll just turn them down just a little bit of a smidge and let's uh, make the title 13 as well. And so I think that is pretty good. It's the same length as that x-axis title. Let's go back to our main title, of course, uh, and we want to say by month. And then when we look at our plot title, let's go ahead and do h just equals uh, 0 0.5. Again, that will center justify the title. So I'll go ahead and make the size 15. And so I think that is a pretty good similar similar size to what they had in the original. 
great. The next thing that we want to take on is the legend. So again, here in the original, you can see that the legend is the same height as the plotting window. Um, it also has breaks every 20 years, whereas my current legend, well, it needs some help. So we'll again come back and we'll then see um, how to do that. So we'll go ahead and do legend.title and I'll say equals element blank and then I'll do legend.background and I'll do uh, element rect fill equals NA to get a blank uh, transparent background. We're getting there, trust me. <laughs> um, so let's now go ahead and add more years and make the years white. And so again, we can do that up here in the scale color Viridis. And again, we wanna do uh, breaks equals, um, and we'll do a seek from uh, 1880 to 2020 by uh, 20s. And then for our legend dot text, I will do element text color equals white. We have labels now every 20 years. So now we wanna stretch the hat and we can do that again down here in the theme by doing legend.key.height. Um, and then we can do unit. And then my height on my figure is 4.5 inches. So when I try four and then the unit will be in inches. So that did not work. <laughs> um, I'm not, I think maybe each year or each separation is four inches. I don't know quite what happened there. Uh, maybe I'll just go back to PT. Uh, and so we'll do PT and then let's try four there. And that's way too short. So I think what I do here now is just kind of futz with the number until I get the size that I like. So let's try 40. That's that's better. Um, let's see if we go up to 60. It's a little too long. So let's try 55. So I think that looks good enough. Um, one other thing that we might want to do is go ahead and add a white border around our um, our legend, our, our the, the color gradient, right? So after doing a little bit of Googling, I found out that I could come up to scale color viridis, and then I could do guides, guide um, equals guide uh, color bar. And then there's an argument here called frame.color with a U. So if you don't use that U, uh, that argument doesn't work. Uh, and so then that will equal white. And that now gives me a white border around uh, my gradient. I can make that line width a little bit thicker if you'd like. Uh, and so we'll do frame dot line width. Uh, and let's say one. Very good. So the last thing I noticed that they have that I don't have um, is that they've got a line for the current year that's a little bit bolder than all the other lines and they've got it labeled with the year. So looking at mine, you know what? <laughs> I actually noticed something weird um, that right here where my crosshairs are, um, it's starting in January and doesn't go back to December. And then it comes up a couple months and then there's like this like straight line with no movement in it. And so I wonder if I'm not thinking about my previous December and next January correctly. Um, and so again, if I have last December, I actually want that to be associated with the next year, right? So if it was December of 21, I would want that to be last December of 22. So not minus one, but plus one. So I'll go ahead and make that a plus. And then I'm gonna want minus one here. Uh, so let's go ahead and rerun everything and make sure that those weird artifacts go away. Phew, that looks a lot better. Uh, we now see that we do have the partial 2022 line in here, and it doesn't just kind of shoot all the way across the figure. And it does appear that all of the lines go back before January. Okay, so that's good. Now what we want to do, like I said, we want to make that bold and we want to put a label on it. So what I will do back here um, in where I was doing this mutate, I'm going to create another um, column, another variable that I'll call this uh, year. And then I'll say year equals equals 2022. Again, you could programmatically figure out what the current year is. So if you're watching this video next year, you could, you could plug that in. Um, I'll leave that for you to figure out. And so this now will create a logical column called this year, right? And so false and trues. And so I can use that um, as a aesthetic, right? And so I can then do size equals this year. And let me go ahead and wrap this around on a separate line. So what I need to add is a scale line manual. Um, and so let's go ahead and add in scale size manual rather. Uh, and then my breaks, I'll set to be um, 
false and true. And then my values will be, um, let's do 0 0.25 and 1. Let's see if that works. We might adjust. Those warning messages go away. I now see that my lines are a pretty good thinness or thickness, <laughs> um, and that this other line for 2022 is a pretty good thickness. Um, I'm pretty happy with that. I forget exactly how it looked before, what the default thickness was, but those seem to be about the same thickness as what Ed Hawkins had. I do need to get rid of the legend for the line thickness. And of course I can do that back up here in geom line by doing show.legend equals false. So of course, when I turn off the legend for geom line, it gets rid of the legend for the gradient as well. So that's not exactly what I want to do. So I'll come back up to geom line and get rid of that show legend equals false. And then in scale size manual, I'll do guide equals, and then in quotes, none. And so that gets rid of the scale size legend and brings back my gradient legend, right? So again, we can use that guide equals none to return, to return off uh, the legend for that individual uh, aesthetic. Now we need to add in our label to indicate that that thick line is for 2022. So I'm gonna come back up here into my ggplot and you'll recall that I did all this stuff where I was binding together those three data frames and then feeding that into ggplot. I'm gonna create a new data frame called tData that I will instead feed in there, right? So if I do tData, uh, t underscore data on that uh, and make sure I've got this run and that works, good. And so with t underscore data then, uh, let's go ahead and create another data frame that's going to be from the year 2022. So we'll then do a filter on um, year equals 2022. That gets me those four, right? And so then what I'll do is a slice max on um, month number, right? And so that gets me uh, the latest data, right? And actually I could go ahead and do a slice max um, on year, uh, so I don't have to say uh, what year it is, right? So this should work next year is what I mean, right? So if, yeah, we get the same result there. And so I'll then call this um, annotation as that. And so now I can add in here geom text data equals current or annotation, right? And then AES, um, let's go ahead and do uh, so the X is going to be the month uh, number, right? Which I've gotten there. So that'll be like three. The Y will be T underscore diff. This all gets inherited anyway from the ggplot, but let's roll with this. And then we'll also then do label equals a year and then color equals year, of course. And then we'll go ahead and outside of this, I'll do inherit AES equals false. Just, just in case, right? Um, I think the grouping might cause problems and I don't know, who knows? It's probably not necessary, but let's see. Good, so we have our 2022. It's um, justified right on the point. So we could of course come back up here to our geom text and I could then do H just equals uh, zero to get it to be left justified. Let's do size equals two. Oh, that made it a little bit smaller. <laughs> let's up it to five. Um, so we'll come back up here and do five. So that makes it bigger. As always, there's always a little bit of fiddling with the code to get it just the way we want it. I wanna nudge it over to the right just a smidge. And in geom text, I will add nudge X uh, and let's do 0 0.25. And I also wanna make it bold. So we'll do font face equals bold. And so maybe that's a little bit too far over. So let's try 0.15 on that nudge. Again, I think this is a pretty cool way to represent the data. Um, in the next episode, we are going to take it up a notch and we're going to play around with polar coordinates and using polar coordinates to represent this data. So you don't miss that exciting episode. Please, please, please be sure you've subscribed to the channel. You've clicked the bell icon to get all the notifications. And so you will be notified when that episode is dropped. Tell your friends about what we're doing here. I've loved seeing how people have taken uh, these visuals as a starting point and then added their own styling to give kind of their own personal, you know, uh, way about them. I love seeing that. Uh, thanks for tweeting those at me on social media. Keep them coming. Keep playing with this. That really shows me that you're really grasping these concepts and that's just wonderful. All right, take care and we'll see you next time for another episode of Code Club.